Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of my painting Rose Glow. Why Rose Glow? Because I painted a flower that was glowing in the sunshine. It was full of light, sunlight, and some very interesting shadow forms. I took a photographic image. In fact, I took a lot, and this was the one I liked the best. So I decided to work with it. I hope you enjoy my video. Give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I wet down a piece of arches paper on a block and decided to jump right in with no pencil lines for this one because I like to try different things. I began with some bright cadmium yellow paint. I put down the edges that I thought would be catching the sunlight from my image. And then I started painting some petals that as I was looking at my image. And I knew some of them would blur and some of them would change and distort. But I liked the air of spontaneity that this kind of painting start gives you. If things get a little confusing, well, you go back and you work at it. I always keep a paper towel handy in case I make a mistake. Or there's some weird color on my paintbrush when I'm painting. And I can quickly get rid of it, hopefully. So you can see a vaguely floral form starting to emerge from the center and radiating outward but I really am giving myself a lot of leeway, letting the paint drift around and run, just to get some random colors, some random shadows, and trying something new. This is the fun part, playing with paint and water. The paper is still wet, and I'm starting to hint at some edges of petals where they are darker on the inside edge and lighten as they move out into the light and unfold. So you can see I'm going in and concentrating the color toward the inner edges of the petals. And now it's dry. And I've got a big blurry form to work with. I begin by doing some masking. I'm doing this masking where I don't want to bother painting over tiny details or painting around them rather. I just want to paint over them and around them and then I can attend to them later. This is primarily at the center of the rose and on some of the edges of the petals where I want to catch some strong light and I don't want to cover them over by accident because I am painting in a rather random manner. I'm putting my masking fluid on with a nice synthetic brush and I found that the bristles of this kind of brush don't get ruined as easily as natural hair brush bristles do. But I also am coating them with some soapy water and a lot of soap before I even use the masking. With that done and dry, the first place I begin to work is with my negative shape of my background. And there is not much background in this painting, just a tiny bit showing here and there. But I want to get it in for my reference, just to see how it's going to work with the rest of the painting. So I've mixed up some Viridian Green and some Indigo and put in a good rich color in the back.
The colors I'm using for this rose are vermilion, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, permanent pink, and some quin violet. And I'm beginning with some very strong dark definitions. I like when I mix the violet with the orange family because it gives me a sort of mauve. And I think that color is very interesting to use. I find it to be natural looking too. How do you mix shadows when you're painting flowers? You certainly don't want to use black, or at least I don't want to use black to mix with the colors for shadows. I guess you could use gray in some cases, but I tend to like to use the purple family and mix it with whatever color family I'm working in. What works best for you? I'd like to hear your answer if you want to write it in in comments. What I'm doing at this point is actually defining and finding petals, finding their forms, finding their shapes, painting around them to make them come forward. You could see how I'm curving the edge of the petal with some lines and then following it with some softening painting over. Each petal that curves, you want to use the veins and the flower parts and show how they curve and the direction they curve in as you continue to define them with their details. Petals that curve out or curl out toward you are going to be lighter on the edge that curls outward. That tricks the eye into seeing them as being sort of three-dimensional. So deep at the base, lighter as they curve out, and if there's an edge sticking straight out or curling straight out at the viewer, that will be the lightest of all. As it begins to curl back in, it gets darker. And you want to try to suggest those curl lines and the curves and shapes of the flower. This floral form had a lot of shadows. So I'm making full use of those darker colors to define the shadows. So you could see me painting the lines in and then softening them. And that is an awful lot of repetitious work, but it really does suggest a floral form for me. Can you feel the center of the flower moving inward as I make it darker and darker? Because that is my goal here and that's what I'm starting to achieve in this painting. At this point most all of the petals have been defined and I'm beginning to work at shading and detailing. There is one or two very confusing petals to me. 
from my photograph as well as from the way I laid out the painting. In one case, I had pretty much changed the structure of the flower and it wasn't going to change back very easily, so I decided just to remake the flower. Trying to do it in a logical way. And I think I pulled it off. You couldn't do that with a human face, but a flower is a lot more forgiving. So as you're seeing me paint right there, you can see the edge that curls forward is much lighter to the eye. And where it recesses, it gets darker. There's a strong shadow right there with some lightness on the edge. And I'm glazing it darker and darker to enhance that edge and the shadow. A random spot of white was left there and I decided to leave it because I liked it. One of my first more intensive watercolor teachers taught that you should try to always leave some white in your watercolor. Leave the paper showing. He felt that it added a lot of sparkle and freshness to the work. So that's what I decided to do. And I've been working with this and trying to work with it for many years. You may be hearing a dog bark and that's because my dog is running around here while I'm making this video as well as another dog that I'm sitting. So please ignore the commotion and we'll just proceed. I'm tackling a petal that's coming straight forward toward the viewer in the center. I've tried to show how it's built and that is it is coming forward with the veins with the curve of the petal and with the light and now I'm beginning to shade the remaining petals toward the outside these were not as complicated as these inner petals because they mostly just grew outward and curved outward. I had a couple blooms left by my random store of wet on wet and sometimes I used them because they were pretty. Blooms are those blobby blurry color edges which can be very attractive, but also can be confusing if it's not where you want it. So I'm softening some of them with a damp brush. There's a large central petal here and it goes from very dark to much lighter. There's another petal right next to it and I have to distinguish them from each other and decide which edge is going to be lighter and paint them in right. It's a judgment call. It's not always so clear cut. And here you see me putting down color and then softening it with water. And I do that repeatedly.
This was another petal that I reinvented because as I started to paint it, I realized I'd painted it wrong. But I think I pulled it off. Or at least I did my best. Now I'm darkening this area of the petal. Another area of glazing which means layering on a shadowed petal. When you layer watercolor, I'm sure you all know, but make sure it's totally dry before you paint another layer on top. Or you could get some of that blooming, some of those weird blurry edges. And if you don't want them, then wait. Now I'm working on an outer petal, or sort of a mid-petal. I've added a number of glazes to my internal petals. And what I ran into on this outer petal was some little areas of white that had been preserved so far. So I painted around them and left them. I can paint over them later if I decide to, but I sort of liked how they added a little sparkle there. So the jury's on hold on that one. And now I'm building up some strong dark colors in the interior of the petal. And that will take more glazes too. And there's a beautiful little fold on the outer edge that I'm trying to show. By painting around it. I liked the form that it had. So I'm blocking it in and then I'll soften it. You can also see I'm painting in some lines to indicate the way the flower folds. And deepening the color in the center. While that dries, I work on another area that needs more development. Now that flower petal that comes straight out at the viewer will appear to come out more strongly if I paint it darker around it. And that's a way to use color to enforce perspective. But it really does work if you look at your image closely. Now back to that folded petal, you can see how I've softened the edge some more, and I will continue to do so. I've taken the masking off the central area where the little inner parts of the rose, the stamens I think, we're showing. I'm painting them in 
a bright yellow. And then I'm darkening around the edges of them and softening them. I want them to stand out, but I don't want them to look fake either. The, the softening is to add a naturalness to the appearance of those little stamens. I'm using a tiny brush because these are tiny areas and I'm going in between them all. And then I go in and soften. And I do a lot of softening of the edges of petals, of the areas where two colors come together. I think flowers look really nice when they're very soft approached. Now this rose image had a lot of strong shadows and I kept painting in dark dark shadows and as watercolor will do they kept lightening once they dried so I'm doing a lot of enhancing and glazing of these dark shadowed areas I've darkened some of the shadows at this point and I'm glazing another layer to make some other colored shadows with vermilion and permanent pink. The darker shadows I have darkened with Quinn Violet. So far I've kept those little white sparkles on that one petal on the left. At this point I've decided I like them, so I'm probably going to keep them. What are they? I don't know, but they look pretty in the picture. And I think maybe they add a little magic. It's a judgment call. At this point, I'm adding some final glazes. And I'm continuing to darken my shadows to add the dark accent that sort of plays with the light to make a painting a little bit exciting. Those dark accent lines and then the pure whites for sparkle. And using a very small brush here to further enhance those little interior stamens of the rose. Now I'm painting those final little bits of background color. There's not a lot showing, but I've decided to use a blue and a green because those are complementary colors to the colors in my flower. And I thought that might make a little extra interest. I'm doing some evaluation by covering up side to side and seeing if anything needs a little bit more adjustment. I've seen that I need to soften some edges, so I'm doing that with a damp brush.
and it's done. I hope you enjoyed my video, Rose Glow. I sure enjoyed painting it. I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe and you can ring the bell and not miss any further videos. There's some links below you can check out if you'd like. You can get more information or you can see some more features that I have such as my Facebook art page, my blog, some products that I make on Fine Art America. So check it out if you get a chance and if you have a thought or a comment I'd really like to hear it in the comment section. I try to answer as many people as I can. And I thank you for watching. Until next time, keep on painting.